side, the first thing we're going to want to do is remove these two handy dandy little thumb screws. Now put these somewhere safe, you definitely don't want to lose them. Then carefully slide the door off and watch out for the fan cable. Go ahead and disconnect that from the harness. Now we can see here our stock Intel cooler. You'll see four plastic pins that are mounting into the motherboard. Push those in and give them a little bit of a twist. You can see there's an arrow on each pin noting in which way that it locks. Now these can be a little bit stubborn sometimes, so don't be afraid to yank on them a bit. Just don't break anything off. Now once they're all loose, you should be able to get the CPU cooler up and off of your chip. Now depending on how old your thermal paste is, it can be pretty glued in there. And don't forget to disconnect the fan from the motherboard. You don't want to bend those pins. Now we can see here this thermal paste has seen better days. It, uh, it's turning to dust, so we definitely got to get this stuff off. We're going to need some rubbing alcohol and some kind of a lint-free cloth. A coffee filter works well. I've got a shop towel here. Now use 90% or better alcohol and just a dab will do you. Get the alcohol directly onto the paste and use that solvent to dissolve and get rid of all that nasty goop that's left behind. And as you see here, it's pretty caked on. Now you really want to polish this thing up until it's nice and smooth and then go back with a dry cloth and make sure it's completely dry and clean before we put our CPU cooler onto our chip. Nice and shiny. All right, now our cooler has a pre-applied thermal paste, so we'll just carefully lower it down onto the motherboard. Now align the little plastic pins loosely together and keep in mind the direction that your fan is gonna be pointing when you put the cooler in. You don't wanna have to take it out later and reorient it. Now as you see, the little pins are spring-loaded. Now just push on them. Now sometimes you have to push pretty hard and they should snap into place. Now this can be a little finicky, especially in a tiny case like this. But after you've installed these coolers a few times, you get the hang of it. This one's giving me a little bit of trouble. All right, here we go. Now make sure that it's completely secured and locked. Otherwise, you're going to have some pretty terrible temperature problems. Now we'll take the fan, and it should come with a little metal clip. It kind of looks like a paper clip. And you're going to want to put that in each of the holes on the fan and carefully line them up. Now this part can be tricky as well. We've got to get this whole thing into the case and mount it onto our cooler. The fan should slide right into a little groove and then just snaps on the side here. It's actually not too hard once you've done it. Now we'll need to add one more clip to make sure this is completely secure. And there we go. Our cooler is installed and our fan is installed. All right, now it's always a good idea to exhaust your cooler directly toward the rear of your case, but don't put the fan directly next to the rear exhaust fan. You wanna give it some space and actually have the aluminum heat sink between both the fans. This should give you the optimal thermals. All right, to complete the installation, we're just gonna hook up the fan back onto the case. Be careful not to bend the pins here. We will slide the door back on. And hopefully we have enough clearance here. It looks like we're gonna make it. It's a tight fit. And now if you didn't lose your two thumb screws, we'll go ahead and put those back into place. And we're done. Our new cooler is installed and ready for testing. For our testing methodology, we will be using CPU-Z and HW monitor. Each cooler was tested at a 23 degree ambient room temperature with our Celeron G530 low spec test rig, isolating all possible variables. The lowest recorded temperature after 30 minutes of idling on the Windows 10 desktop and the highest recorded temperature after 30 minutes with 100% CPU utilization on all cores will be used for this test. First, our stock Intel cooler, we can see an idle CPU temp of 35 degrees Celsius and a full load temp of 59 degrees Celsius. Our Be Quiet Pure Rock Slim is 29 degrees idle with 44 under full load.